Hikers, what has been the most fricked up thing you've seen? Not safe for work. Someone's backpack, jacket, and wallet left on the edge of a 2000 cliff in a popular national park. Rangers found the body at the bottom the following day. I was on a mountain rescue team for several years. Saw a lot of stuff, but one that stands out is a guy who fell over 2000 feet off a cliff and onto rocks. Not pretty. Me and my friend had just set up camp and chilled for a little bit not far from an pretty overgrown trail that seemed almost abandoned and forgotten. We were spooked by a noise and it was a mountain biker coming down that steep and bad trail rather reckless. He then stopped hastily pulled his shorts down and squatted down to spray diaia like crazy before he kept going. We were pretty camouflaged so he never noticed us watching. So about 5 years ago a friend and I were hiking in the Oregon Cascades in the mid-spring. We were about 6 miles in from the road nowhere near a trail on about 6 feet of snow. We were going out for five days to attempt to summit a few peaks, so we looked like grizzly mountain men. Around a tree comes two guys and a dog. Mid-fifties, his son mid-twenties, and Fifi. They are wearing trail running shorts, running shoes and a running water backpack. AKA, nothing of real use. PCT open? They asked. Friend and I looked at each other, looked at them, tried not to laugh and explained. We are five miles from the PCT and 2,000 feet lower in elevation, what are you trying to do? They planned on doing a 20-mile run along the PCT starting on the other side of the mountains but got sidetracked due to snow. Again we explain that they are fricked. I tell them that there is a road with cell service 6 miles downhill along our tracks and if need be we can hike them out. They refused and asked if the PCT was open again. I flat out told them you are fricked, let me hike you out they were like nah, we've got this and ran off in the wrong direction. We camped there for the night and followed their tracks for a half mile the next morning. They disappeared, no signs of them. After a few stormy days and failed summit attempts we hiked out. I drove around to the parking area they mentioned and looked through the wilderness permit tags to try to find a name. Nothing. It gets weird though. A few years later, my parents ran into the same nondescript people in the same area again asking about a trail loop, same conditions. Late winter, snowshoeing far from a road and they were lost. My dad also tried to hike them out but they denied and took off in the wrong direction. He followed their tracks for a half mile before he lost them. So if anyone sees the ghosts of the Oregon Cascades, let me know. My wife and I were hiking on a remote trail. I had to pee, so I stepped behind an evergreen and started to do my business. A 60-year-old woman came out of nowhere, dropped her pants and peed. Right next to me. As in my junk was 30 from her face. We strangely watched each other pee while chatting about the hike. My wife saw this go down. 10 years later and she can't bring it up without giggling. I did a wilderness survival course when I was a teen so I have a few of these. I've told the forest fire story a million times in similar threads. Probably next best one would be Jardia in a situation where we couldn't get medevac out there for quite some time. Jardia is already an awful thing to contract when you can have quick access to any semblance of privacy and comfort. But it's a camper's disease so that's usually not true and it wasn't here either. One of the girls got it and by the time they called for med evac she had been mildly symptomatic for a few days, and because of weather condition they had to send a truck and it took quite some time. So she was in the thick of it for a couple days in the camp. We dug a separate hole for her to shit in. We all had to assist with her care but also keep away because of how crazy contagious it is edit. Crazy contagious if you can't stay clear of pother people's poop, which we really couldn't, but because this was a treatment establishment, she couldn't be out of loss of staff for very long, so she basically just lived next to her shit trough. I think the scariest part for me was, initially, she was embarrassed. What teen girl or anyone tbh, wouldn't be, if their peers had to hear and see them having explosive diarrhea into a hole. I heard her cry to staff about it, beg for privacy, etc. But the scary part was that by day two, so much energy and life had faded out of her and she was so bad off that all semblance of embarrassment, shyness, etc. had completely left her. She just sort of laid next to the trough and kept her pants down and scooted backwards towards it when she needed to go. When she wasn't shitting she was in a lot of pain so she'd just sort of lie there and moan. I genuinely thought she was going to die. Jardia isn't a death sentence at all, very survivable. But 15 year old me didn't know that and watching it happen was one of the scariest things I've ever seen. We were about 8 to 10 miles into the Wind River Range when we decided to camp near a nice lake. We wanted to get off the trail and the lakeshore so. We walked up beside the inlet stream. There we found at least 100 piles of human waste plus toilet paper, not buried, and right next to a pretty stream. Disgusting. I walked past a campsite with a ton of smashed alcohol bottles and trash. Started feeling uncomfortable and walked faster to where the trail looked over a canyon. Smelled something bad and looked down to see, like three feet from me, two bloated dead dog heads sticking out from a rolled up tarp. Immediately turned around and booked it to my car. I called the forest service to report it. I think some people got drunk and killed the dogs or maybe it was a dog fighting thing. 
There may have been more under that tarp but I was freaked out. I think if it was someone's pets they would have tried to bury them. I was on a trail in Shenandoah and came across this couple just freaking away outside their tent. It was like they wanted us to see them. A well-maintained two-seater outhouse, numerous miles from any path or sign of human activity, just sitting there encircled by tall trees and dense overgrowth. The outhouse evidenced no sign of use or footprints in the area. Yet it was stocked with TP, magazines, freshly painted, and screens on the vents. You stumbled across one of Rick's private toilets. Hiking a trail in Sedona alone, I heard a strange sound like thunder clapping. I stopped hiking then a boulder the size of three basketballs comes bouncing down the mountain about 15 feet in front of me, freaking yikes. My ex and I went for a little evening hike on the trails by our campground and it felt eerie and kept turning around BC we felt like we were being followed but never saw anything. When we got back to the trailhead we got chewed out by the park ranger because they had a lot of mountain lion activity and we weren't supposed to be out at dusk. That feeling I hope I never feel again. I was on a trail in MA when two teenagers on motorbikes came gunning through the woods. One hit a bump at speed and went flying one way and his bike went another. He flew right into a tree trunk. He wasn't wearing a helmet. Neither of them were. I went over to see if I could help. I told him not to move and I'd get someone. He told me to go frick myself and limped over to his bike, got on it and slowly drove off. His friend just looked at me and shrugged and drove off after him. A few days later I saw his friend in a convenience store. I asked him how his friend was and was told that he had died from his injuries. Hiking in West Virginia with my dad years ago, we heard a car up ahead and came over a hill and saw a tree fall on the back of a pickup truck. When we came up to talk to the guy and asked what happened, he told us his truck had started to go off the narrow road and got stuck, so he hooked a bungee cord from his truck to a tree and gunned the engine. He said he thought that the bungee cord would cause the truck to bounce back and then would be back on the road. I had hiked in 15 miles to an alpine wilderness and just laid down for the night when a youngish guy in shorts and no bag pops out and asks me if I have water. I of course shared my water, he immediately said he had been hiking since yesterday, apparently him and his friend went way back and off trail, skirting some cliffs along the way. Then he just says half jokingly, yeah his brains are everywhere. I laughed half acidly, but he was sending off a really deadly vibe, not dangerous, just stone cold shock. I asked him to clarify that last part, and offered him food and a cigarette. I also ordered him to sit down, he didn't want to because he would lose his legs if he sat now, but I explained he needed to sit a while. Long story short, his friend slipped and fell and when he hit, his head popped and then his body got wedged in a crevasse. The guy I was talking to had spent all the previous day hiking around the cliff to find his friend, then had to hike out of the valley up the ridge and down again, all on Taylor's slope off trail. He was absolutely shredded, skinned, tore up. He was begging me to come with him and help me get his friend out of the hills. That's the part that really stuck with me, he got up and was about three feet into the bush when I grabbed him gently and said hey I got a phone we'll see if emergency service works. Somehow it did, and I have zero idea how, technically or otherwise. We were standing in a glacial cratered alpine lake, 15 miles from the trailhead. I got rescue up there, and man, I was super impressed with their response, within a few hours the first group of volunteers were passing my camp, these guys all looked like supermen, and they were. All night afterwards a constant stream of rescue volunteers. I stayed camp and made a comfy spot for them to rest on the way down. They had to wait up there in whiteout conditions for six nights, but rather than leave they kept a constant vigil over the hiker's dead body. When the weather broke, a chopper flew in and took them all out. I've never been so deeply moved and impressed with that kind of selflessness in something we regard as a hobby, a sport, words that take away the very dangerous nature of it. Read all these stories and it seems most are deaths by slip and fall. Happens too easy, don't take the chance with your life. Wasn't technically hiking but I think this fits. Once used a tree as a bridge over a little gap while I was exploring the woods behind my school. Didn't realize it was rotten until I was about halfway across, and the thing gave out from under me. I reached the button, only about 10 feet, so no major injuries, looked up, and a few feet away from me was a deer carcass staring straight at me. It was like in a movie. Scared me shitless. Not really fricked up but scared the fuck out of me. One time a buddy and I were camping around Diamond Lake in Oregon. I can't remember the exact name of the site but it was around that area. This was the off season and we were the only ones camping around this lake area. It was pitch black out there with the exception of our campfire. So around 1 in the morning we were just chillin' smoking a bowl bullshitting. The area we were at had a hill just above us with a lot of trees and bushes on it. We're sitting there and we start hearing a cracking sound then a huge crash and something sounding like it's rolling and then another huge smash. We get the flashlight on looking up the hill and all we can see is dust and debris falling down. We're totally freaked the frick out. We didn't know what happened, but we decided to go to bed. Well the next morning when we woke up we notice a gigantic old dead tree that had fallen and started rolling down the hill. 
You could see where it broke off up the hill and rolled all the way down breaking smaller trees along the way. It was probably 30 feet tall and was a big chonky bitch. This fricker was completely sideways and was only stopped by three other trees that held it back up the hill. It would have rolled right through our campsite if the other trees hadn't stopped it. I was freaked out the night before but seeing it in the light of day knowing how close we came to dying was way more terrifying. This is more camping after a day of hiking but my husband and I decided to set up in a campground where no one else was. The gate to the area was open but weirdly deserted. We may have been too early into the season, March, and we guess the gate was accidentally left open but, decided why not, enjoy some peace and quiet in a usually full campground. During the night we were woken up by noises and saw two trucks with their headlights on pulling into the camp and people jumping out of the beds with flashlights. We were scared shitless these people were going to find and hurt us. Probably sounds silly but we weren't sure what these people's intentions were. Sometimes humans are scarier than nature, after they looked around for a bit they got back in the trucks and left. Didn't spot our tent in the trees towards the back of the camp but holy shit we were ready to go after that. They could have just been checking out the campground if they wanted to stay there but the vibe felt really creepy like they were looking for something. Someone casually lobbing grapefruit sized rocks downhill, directly where we'd been a few cutbacks prior. Didn't even think he might kill someone. This was Wisdom Tree in LA, so imagine a very steep traverse. Me and my family were once on a night walk at the sea, when suddenly some strange lights emerged from it. My brother and I were 12 and 10 and were scared as hell and my mother was also freaking out. So we steadily increased our pace until we were running. When we were back at our cabin again we were speculating about all sorts of things, aliens, fish people, the thing from the swamp. The next days, the locals told my mom, that this were some night fishers with their lamps. So this was the very anticlimactic end for my supernatural experience. When I was a teenager we went away for a week of camping at the scout reserve. My dad was our scoutmaster and we were mostly all friends from growing up. There was one kid Andre, the youngest, that we didn't really know well and was definitely kind of weird, withdrawn and awkward, just kinda different, but still a sweet guy that everyone liked. Toward the end of the week we went out on an overnight, just the scouts without my dad or his buddy who was our other scouter. We took a boat across the lake and then hiked for hours into the bush. It was a really hot day and my older brother was leading us but not drinking any water and wearing a light jacket which made him extra hot. Eventually we found a sweet spot next to a huge cliff which we jumped off into the lake below for hours until we made a fire and cooked dinner. Eventually we all fell asleep under the stars. Around 4.30 a.m., just before sunrise, my friend Sean woke me up and asked if I knew where Andre was. I said no and that maybe he went to piss, but after 5 minutes he wasn't back so we got up and started looking around and calling his name. Nothing. So we ranged a little further and then I saw his sleeping bag at the edge of the cliff. I freaked out and ran over to see if I could see anything at the bottom, but I saw nothing. We tried to get my brother up but he was pretty sick from heat stroke so I took charge of the situation. We started ranging out into the woods and calling his name. One foe the guy started doing the emergency whistle call, three short whistles, but we were really in the middle of nowhere. I started going deeper into the woods calling his name. Then I thought I heard something. I stopped and listened and heard a faint cry deep in the woods. So I started running, crashing through thick undergrowth, getting lashed in the face with branches and stumbling across fallen logs. His cries got louder and eventually I arrived at this huge clearing in the woods to find him sitting on a fallen tree, in his underwear and a t-shirt. He said he'd been there for hours, having woken up on the ground in the dark and having no idea where he was so he just sat it out, waiting for dawn. It was really spooky. The craziest thing was that his watch had been reset so he didn't know what time it actually was. We all accepted that it was probably sleepwalking, but, he was so far in the woods and didn't have a scratch on him, and this clearing was so bizarre because it was big and round in the middle of these really dense woods. To this day I wonder what really happened. I won't classify it as fricked up, more like surprised. I walked up to a secluded alpine lake in WA and found a couple skinny dipping. They were right next to my exit route, so I had no choice but to pass them. We had a nice 5 minute chat about how beautiful the weather, scenery was and then I was on my way. I guess it's only weird if you make it weird. All kinda of animals running toward me, away from something. At first it just looked like a random wolf running at me which was pretty scary on its own, but when it passed me then was followed by dozens of other animals and birds it was even more terrifying that they were running from something. I ran too. Hiking the Appalachian Trail. Setting up camp one afternoon, and I left my socks and bandana and such on a big flat rock in the sun so the day's sweat would dry. While I'm getting my tent up, I hear a noise and turn around. Fricking deer stole my bandana and then stood a constant 15 feet away no matter where I moved, chewing the bandana and assumedly enjoying the salt from my sweat. Asshole. Someone had pinned a Snickers candy bar wrapper to a tree using hypodermic needles, about 4 needles were used to do this. Most of the fricked up stuff I've seen was related to human behavior. 
Hiking the ad in 2018 there was a man who was struggling with his mental health, he said so himself that he was out of his medications, who started following a young woman in our group. One night we stayed at a hostel in town and she woke up to him sitting naked on the end of her bed. She was terrified but she was able to get out of the bed and walk out of the room without being assaulted. She told an ex-military guy we were with and he took out a large knife and threatened to murder the guy if he didn't leave immediately. We never saw him again. The next year there was a mentally unstable hiker who was arrested for threatening other hikers with a large knife. A judge released him and he ended up murdering another hiker a week later. There was also a stretch of like 4 to 5 days where a group of section hikers had a large dog with them that was attacking hikers. That was pretty scary because the dog's paws were all torn up and it was clearly in pain but the section hikers maintained that he was fine and insisted on staying at crowded camping spots and allowing the dog to wander off leash. I know at least three different hikers that the dog bit and there were multiple yelling arguments that almost escalated into physical fights from unhappy hikers who were mad at how poorly the section hikers were handling the dog. I was hiking in the White Mountains in NH and there was a huge pile of human shit right in the middle of the trail that had been stepped in several times. It was accompanied by a pair of compression pants that have been clearly used to wipe. You are in the woods asshole, step off the trail at least. Two stags that had locked horns and become entangled on a wire fence. One of them was being eaten alive by two large eagles as its hind leg looked like it was sliced open. The other one I presumed had died, I think they were stuck for a while. We notified the park ranger. Being a reasonably seasoned hiker, I'm my late 20s having a mild heart attack recently climbing an extremely steep final summit of a mountain in my local country and having a man in his mid-70s at least breeze by me with two walking sticks with two people who I can only assume are his kids literally keeping him up. But not assisting if that makes sense. I still can't wrap my head around it. Should be biologically impossible. Put me in my place real quick.